It's hard to believe that it's almost a week now since the Prime Minister delivered his statement and the roadmap to our planned recovery and return to what we perhaps have been calling normal. I wonder how you felt as you listened to what sometimes felt like a very confusing message with lots of highs and some lows. Things that we look forward to and things that are perhaps a little bit more challenging. It's great though to know that we are on the road, that schools will soon be reopening, children enjoying lessons again, colleges opening. We even know when the pubs might open. The Prime Minister set out a roadmap and like any journey, there's some good news and there's some challenges. That's what we hear in today's gospel. Jesus sets out his roadmap. And he asks us how we want to respond to his news. Do we want to trust him and walk with him in faith? Or do we want to turn away? We're encouraged to think about who we are, what our relationship is with God, and how much do we really trust him? Thanks for joining us for our worship today. Enjoy our prayer time and our celebration as Christians in this community on this, the second week of Lent. Welcome as we worship together on the second Sunday of Lent. Each Sunday during this season of reflection and growth, when we're asked to do all that we can to prepare for Easter, we're going to focus on key aspects of our faith as Christians. Today we explore and reflect on daring to be open without fear of rejection. So we begin today by asking you to look at this image. Not really an image we normally associate with Lent. As you look at this image, try to think about the last week. And if you can, try to bring to mind the name of someone you've agreed with. You might also like to think about anyone who's made you smile. You may want to write down the names to help you to remember them. And now something a little different. As you look at this image, perhaps you can think of someone who you've disagreed with. It might be something really insignificant or something more important. Can you think of people who make you feel angry or upset and those who you just can't agree with? Today, 
we're going to be reminded that even Jesus and his disciples didn't always agree. But those disagreements didn't mean that Jesus rejected them. In fact, it was through having the courage to argue with Jesus that the disciples learned how to follow him. So to enter more deeply into any understanding of who Jesus is, we need to be completely honest about ourselves. If you look at this image for a moment, Perhaps as you do so, you'd like to reflect on these questions. How easy would you find it to speak up in a group like this? And what topics might you be prepared to speak up about? For example, would you speak up if you thought people would reject you? And how do you react when there's conflict or disagreement? Our journey through Lent draws us towards the cross, Christ's sacrifice of himself for all creation. This journey draws us into the reality of God's love for us. We come face to face with our brokenness and by doing so are ready to receive forgiveness, healing and grace. Words of greetings on the lips, words of love on the lips, the example you gave us. Forgive us when we fail to act as you do, Lord. Words of retaliation, insincerity and malice on our lips. Forgive us when we act towards others in this way, Lord. Overwhelmed by complex relationships and rocky paths. Forgive us for not setting our minds on you and your ways. Fear of rejection and wary of being our true selves. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to give ourselves as you give. Forgive us, Lord, our failure to trust you. For not allowing you to be in the driving seat. Lord of covenant relationship, lead us. And help us to live your way. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. The collect for this, this week, which gathers up all our prayers. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's sufferings and by following in his way, come to share in his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 7. When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from St Paul's letter to the Romans. The promise that Abraham would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham believed in the presence of the God who gives life to the dead, and calls into existence things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words, it was reckoned to him, were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in God, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. If any want to become my followers, Let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Praise Praise to you, you, O Christ, Christ, King King of of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Mark. Glory Glory to to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowds with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May we speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Last week on Ash Wednesday, I suddenly had a light bulb sort of moment. It wasn't really anything to do with Ash Wednesday, but it went something like this. It's half term. If we'd been in a more normal time, then we would have all been enjoying pantomime week at Christ the Servant Church. He's behind you. So, what did we miss? 
Another gathering of some strange characters, the good and the bad, the beautiful and the ugly, the menacing villain, and so much more. No recalling of pantomime would be complete without those scenes when someone or something invisible to the audience appears but is unseen to some of the characters. The character appears on stage and the audience cry out, Behind you! As we know, the characters on stage, a bit like me, look behind and can't see anything. <laughs> but what appears behind them continues and the shouting persists. This is, of course, repeated several times with increased excitement and shouting. Throughout this and other similar scenes, the audience and good characters in the pantomime develop strong rapport. After one of the good characters, often one of the good characters will ask the audience to help by keeping watch on something special or looking after a special place and shouting out if anyone comes along to try and pinch that object or take the place. In this kind of production, the actors often address the audience directly, which is known as breaking the fourth wall. It's something which boosts the audience investment in the story and draws them in to become investors and participants in the action. But if you think about it, in many ways, the worship and Bible readings during Lent are doing just that. All of this takes us to the height of the drama in Holy Week, when worship becomes far more dramatic, processing into church on Palm Sunday and reenacting the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and the crowds hailing him as their king. Then we recall Jesus cleansing the temple by overturning the market stalls, driving the animals out. We also reflect on Judas making the deal with the Jewish leaders and betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. The drama then moves up a gear as we find ourselves at the Last Supper, having our feet washed, celebrating the Eucharist around the table of the Lord and moving out to watch and pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. On Good Friday, we walk the Stations of the Cross, moving with Jesus from his trial through the painful and punishing journey, listening to those who met Jesus on the way. Then we contemplate the stripping, the nailing, the dying and the burying. Eventually, we come to the height of the drama, the bursting from the tomb, the light, the joy, the victory but we have a way to go through the remaining five weeks of Lent before we reach those events of Holy Week and Easter. Today in the Gospel reading, we're invited into the experience of breaking the fourth wall and to enter into the mystery of the event which St Mark places at the centre of his Gospel. This is the crucial turning point in the Gospel itself. In the verses immediately before today's Gospel reading, Jesus has fed 4,000 people, dismissed the Pharisees who are demand, demanding signs from him, and he heals the blind man of Bethsaida. And after this, and all that has gone before, Peter, in answering a question from Jesus, finds himself declaring his belief that Jesus is the Messiah. But no sooner had Peter spoken and declared his faith, that Jesus predicts three times his suffering, death and resurrection. And each time the gospel immediately goes on to record the reaction of the disciples, which shows clearly how far they had misunderstood his meaning. They were looking into the traditional Jewish understanding that the Messiah would be a great warrior who would defeat all Israel's enemies. They expected the Messiah to be a mighty warrior king, better and stronger than even King David. Jesus starts to challenge Peter's understanding of what the Messiah would be like by explaining how Jesus knew his Messiahship would play out. Death, three days in a tomb, and then new life. In response, Peter vehemently remonstrates with Jesus and argues that this was not how he and so many others believe that God worked. Jesus does not continue the discussion, but ends it sharply by reprimanding Peter. 
In so many ways, Peter is like the hero in the pantomime, with Jesus as the audience telling him a truth that the disciple cannot believe. Because until this moment, this was something Peter had not even seen for himself. In so many ways, the closing words of Jesus to Peter are the hardest of all, because he tells Peter directly that he is not focused on God's ways, but on human ones. If that's where Peter wishes to stay, then he's effectively acting like Satan, because his focus is not on God's ways. We may feel that Peter had every right to object to Jesus speaking to him in this way. After all, he was only saying what the Jewish scriptures say about the Messiah, who they see and expect to be a triumphant warrior, who would release his people from Roman tyranny and restore the independent kingdom of Israel. That was the divine way as far as he was concerned. It's what he would have been taught from being a tiny child and up through into his adult life. A brutal death, executed under Roman order as a common criminal, would have seemed too, far too far from Jewish expectation and more like human failure. But I suppose we could suggest that in thinking like this, Peter was in fact forgetting the example of Abraham, whom we heard something about in our first reading. The encounter that we heard about in our Old Testament reading tells us that the ways in which God fulfills divine promises are not subject to the rules, values and cultural expectations of human beings. This is something that we forget at our peril. Just because we find something to be comfortable or to our liking doesn't necessarily mean that it's God's will or God's way. In fact, it might be slightly healthier for us in Christian terms to be a little more suspicious of what we like when it comes to God. If all that sounds a little strange, think again about our second reading, where St Paul demonstrates clearly that God's grace always trumps human logic. St Paul also reminds us that Abraham has faith in God. He trusts that despite his advancing years and his wife Sarah's barrenness, God will accomplish what seems like the impossible. He made a promise that was offered to make him the father of a great nation. St Paul calls us to have such faith in the God who raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus himself, when talking to both disciples and the wider crowd in today's gospel, urges them, and us too, to have abiding trust in God's ways. As well as that, this tells us that the serious sacrifice of the cross is to be carried out into the world by all who claim to be followers of Jesus. And by doing this, we demonstrate our belief and trust in Jesus. The gospel, or the good news, demands that we place God's love for all above our own needs. And in committing to following it, we rightly set the divine over all things human. In pantomime, the back and forth banter between stage and audience creates a relationship between the characters and those watching that is deeply embedded in the performance, but which also relies on misunderstanding for comic and dramatic effect. The relationship of Peter and the disciples with Jesus is, at this stage in the gospel, still fraught with misheard messages. Peter is so preoccupied with the immediate needs of his people that he can only see the solution in human terms. Unlike Abraham, whose faith allowed him to trust that God would fulfil promises made on God's terms and not ours. The sweep of scripture through the Old and New Testaments reminds us to see beyond a single spotlit moment and to trust in the breadth of God's plan for all creation. Today, we're invited again to break through the fourth wall and to walk with Jesus into God's vision and God's future and not our own. 
the moment we turn aside and lay claim on our traditions, likes and preferences, or when we put our trust in money, the world and its empty promises, is the moment we fail to take that step. Putting that trust into action has sacrificial implications for all of us. Following the cross means leaving self behind and living a life focused upon God's vision and not our own. I guess the question to all of us on this second Sunday of Lent is, are we ready to take that step? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God. You have called us into life to love and serve you. You have promised that you are with us always and that you are our helper and guide. We give you thanks for all who hear and obey your call. For men and women who willingly sacrifice and deprive themselves for the good of others. We remember all who have spent their lives in your service. We ask you to give strength to all who are quietly seeking to give you their love and their lives. We remember today all who suffer rejection, pain or loss. Lord, as you have called us, hear us when we call upon you. We remember with gratitude all who have given their lives in research and exploration for the good of others. We ask you to bless all scientists, technicians and leaders of people. We pray for those working among the poor and the deprived of our world. Lord, as you have called us, hear us when we call upon you. We give thanks for all our parents and loved ones that what they do for us, for their love, their sacrifice and their care. We seek your blessing upon our homes and our families. We remember all who have no one to care for them. Lord, as you have called us, hear us when we call upon you. We give thanks for the dedication of doctors, nurses and all hospital staff. We ask your blessing on all who are in hospital or who are ill at this time and upon all who look after them. We remember all who feel that no one cares about them. Lord, as you have called us, hear us when we call upon you. We rejoice that you have called us to eternal life and that you have, have invited us to enjoy your presence forever. We pray for all who have given their lives in the service of others and for all our loved ones departed. May they now rejoice in the fullness of your kingdom. Lord, as you have called us, hear us when we call upon you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Through the psalmist, God says, be still and know that I am God. Let us come again into God's presence and still our hearts. Let us come together to listen to God. Let us be still and know that God is indeed God. All-powerful God of past, present and future, keeper of promises. We love you and we come to you. Son of man, the way, the truth and the life, loving despite rejection. We love you and we come to you. Holy Spirit, living power within, helping, guiding, testing and transforming. We love you and we come to you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, your unique relationship, open to us. We love you and we come to you. The Lord says, 
Those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer this day in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power, power and, and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, Dying you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Mary, the mother of God, St Thomas a Becket, St Michael and all the angels and saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus, who was handed over to be crucified for us, out of love taught us to call God our Father, and so we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, we are, are one body, because we all share in one bread. bread. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to, to the glory of, of God, God the Father. The body of Christ which was broken for you. The blood of Christ which was shed for you. Amen. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ broken for me. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen.
Almighty God, you see that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Everything I am, Lord, and everything I do, help me always to be more like you. Teach me to be yours, Lord. Show me when I'm wrong. Help me to be always more like you. You accepted all, Lord. Help everyone to find the way. Help me to be always more like you. Amen. May the almighty God of Abraham daily increase our faithfulness. May the crucified Christ restore in us his image and the ever-present spirit draw us into heaven's embrace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Eucharist is ended. Our service must now begin. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We're now going to say a prayer which you might find helpful to use during this week. It's a prayer to sustain us. We, we thank, thank you, faithful Lord, for your, your patience, patience, provision and, and power, for your tenderness, trust and triumph, for your security and strength, for your compassion and wisdom. We thank you, Lord, that through your grace and mercy, the blessings of faith and, and your covenant love, you equip, teach and guide us as we traverse today's world, ever mindful of your steadfast love. Amen. 